What we're looking for is a thermodynamic parameter that will predict the direction of physical processes and chemical reactions. We know enthalpy isn't sufficient. Reactions can go with releasing energy and absorbing energy. So we need another parameter. Well, let's look at this physical process. This is a gas, and we're going to let it expand into a vacuum. Now, we know this goes naturally to expand into the vacuum. In fact, we never notice the gas compressing itself back to one side. When this process goes, expanding against a vacuum, no work is done. It's an isothermal process. No heat is absorbed or released. No energy changes. So this process has three thermodynamic parameters, the energy change, the work, and the heat all zero. There's no indicator among our thermodynamic parameters that this process will even proceed. Nothing changes thermodynamically, as far as we can see. So we need another thermodynamic parameter. Since the reverse never occurs, there has to be something, some driving force, that makes it go in that direction. Yet it's not energy, heat, or work. Well, it turns out a statistical argument is what we're looking for. And let's consider this situation in a very simple case. Instead of a mole of particles, let's just take two. If I have two particles, and I arrange it so that the sides of the flask are different beakers, there's one way to arrange this system with both of them on this side. If I let the particle fly to the other side, that is, I open the valve, now either particle, the yellow one or the blue one, could have crossed over to the other flask. So there's two equally likely energy states for the one on either side, the equal distribution. Two equally likely, yellow over here or blue over here, states that describe equal, equal distribution. Twice as likely to see this state as both on one side. Now, as you increase the number of particles, the number of ways you can arrange that state where half are on one side and half are on the other increase dramatically. And we can track them because that actually tracks mathematically as binomial coefficients, or we can use a Pascal's triangle to track the number of ways you can arrange the system with equal distribution. The way you do a Pascal's triangle is you take 1 and 1, and then for two particles, you add the two numbers to get the lower number. So uh, essentially, there's a 0 here. So I would add 0 and 1 to get 1, 1 and 1 to get 2, and 1 and 0 to get 1. This tells us for two particles what we already know. If you have both on one side, there's one way to do that. If you have one on each side, there's two ways to do that. And essentially, both on the other side, there's one way to do that. So twice as likely to see the one on each side solution. And you can expand the Pascal's triangle easily. Just keep doing that addition. 1 and 0 make 1. 1 and 2 make 3. 2 and 1 make 3. 1 and 0 make 1. So this would be the 3 particle case, the 4 particle case, the 5 particle case, the 6 particle case. Notice by the time I get to 6 particles, there are 20 ways to have the particles three on either side. So here are six particles, and I've made them distinguishable so we can tell three on each side. There's 20 ways to arrange this. And you could go through there. There's only, there's only 20. It would take a few minutes. But you could say, well, it could be the green over here or the yellow over here with the brown and the blue. And you could keep going and find all 20 of those arrangements. The point is, though, all those are equally likely and there's 20 of them versus the one way to have them all on one side. So if you had all of these states available to you, one side and two on one side and three on this side, the most likely case, 20 times more likely, is equally distributed. Now, as you go to more particles, that becomes even more pronounced. You get to just 50 particles, and it's already hundreds of trillions of ways to arrange the particles equally on each side. So 
a hundred trillion times more likely to see them equally distributed as all on one side. That's dramatic for just 50 particles. Imagine going to a mole of particles. If you go to a mole of particles, this number 2 to the power 10 to the 23rd is astronomically large. In fact, I would call it bigger than astronomically large because this is bigger than the total number of particles in the universe. So it's just astronomically, bigger than astronomically, more likely to find the particles equally distributed between both sides. We call that, in fact, statistical inevitability. If you look at this system, every second for a million lifetimes, the likely case is the one you'll see. It's these trillions and trillions and trillions of times more likely that you'll see them equally distributed, so that's the likely case you'll see. No one has ever observed them all over on one side. In all human existence and in all our lifetimes, this is still overwhelmingly more likely we'll see equal distribution. So this is actually a measure of the direction that the universe likes to go. That is, the natural progressions of things is towards the most likely arrangement. The most likely arrange arrangement is the one with the most possible ways, the most possible microstates that are all equal. So when we said for 50 particles there were 100 trillion ways to arrange them equally on both sides, that's 100 trillion possible microstates. That's a lot of ways, a very large number of ways to arrange that particular arrangement. It's the most likely arrangement. We're going to call this number of ways to arrange the system, the number of accessible microstates, the entropy of the system. We're going to take the number of ways, the number of equal microstates, times Boltzmann's constant, so Boltzmann's constant, natural log of the number of microstates, and we're going to define that as the entropy of the system. And this is our new thermodynamic parameter. Because when the entropy increases, that's the favored direction of the system. Systems move towards the distribution of states. The more ways I can arrange energy, is the important facet of the universe. I go towards distributing energy among the most possible number of ways. So large numbers of microstates are favored by the universe. That's the natural progression. In fact, we'll talk about this entropy change. We'll say, if you measure the number of ways you can arrange the system, how that changes, the number of ways the surroundings changes, and you measure the entropy of the system and the entropy of the surroundings, you'll find that for all processes that proceed naturally, the entropy of the universe increases. So this is a thermodynamic parameter that is not conserved. The entropy of the universe continues to increase for every process that occurs. Processes that occur with an increase in the entropy of the universe are called spontaneous. So now we have a formal definition of spontaneous. Spontaneous is the natural direction of the universe, and it occurs when entropy of the universe increases. Those are also called irreversible processes. That is, we never observe the reverse process happening by itself. Now that doesn't mean we can't make the reverse process happen. You know we could create a system that would have a piston and push all these gases back to one side and evacuate this side. But in doing so, we'd have to bring energy in from the surroundings. And, and bringing energy in from the surroundings makes the surroundings entropy change. So that the overall entropy of the universe, even for that process, compressing it down to one side would still be greater than zero. That process would go as an increase in entropy of the universe. We can be very careful and have processes that occur with no entropy change in the universe. That is, the systems and surroundings just balance each other out, or there's no change in entropy in the system and the surroundings. 
That would be saying that each side of a chemical reaction is equally likely. That is, there's no entropy penalty for being on one side or the other side. I can be a reactant or I can be a product. Going between the two, there's no entropy change of the universe, so it's equally likely that I'm on either side. That's the definition of equilibrium. If it's equally likely for me to be here or here, no energy penalty, then I'll switch between the two freely. I'll be at equilibrium. Now, entropy decreasing in the universe, those processes are not possible. So now we have a thermodynamic parameter that will tell us the direction of things. If we can measure entropy of the system and the surroundings, and if that sum of the entropy changes in the system and the surroundings are greater than zero, the entropy of the universe increases, then that is the favored direction of that chemical or physical process. It's entropy that determines the favored direction in the universe.